Have you ever heard the phrase or the saying that to truly understand something, you need to try to teach it? Well, in today's video on the NC Barndo Build channel, I'm going to try to explain this three-way switch system that we have going into the dining room. We're not wiring the switches up. We're just kind of getting things ready for the rough-in inspection, but I want to make the final process really easy and simple where I can just put a switch in, the wires are set, and I can hook it up and go. So let's dig into this. One more note, I'm not a licensed electrician. What I'm trying to do is think about what I'm doing here and think about how this all works together. And that's what I wanna share with you guys. So maybe it will encourage you to attempt your own three-way switch circuit. Let's be honest, the internet is littered with videos, pictures, schematics to show you how to wire this up so you could follow pictures wire it up without even thinking about it. But I think once you really understand what's going on with the switch and the three-way system, it'll make sense and you can hook it up no matter what your configuration. Now that we got that out of the way, let's talk about my specific configuration. This box, I have power coming in and leaving. So the power source for the three-way switching circuit is located right here in my hand. This box also has a switch that's going to run the lights in this hallway that I'm sitting in, and it also has the conductors to run the light in the dining room, along with the switch at the other end of this wall. So let's start by talking about the grounds. This is the emergency path that electricity can take if you have an issue in your circuit. So what we can do with these is bundle these all together. And then since I have a two gang box, I have two switches, a ground needs to go to each switch for safety purposes. So I'm gonna tie these four grounds together and then have two pigtails, one going to each switch. I'm gonna coil it up, put it in the back of the box and that'll be my emergency return in the event that something happens and hopefully uh, if this is ever needed, the breaker will kick out and shut the circuit down. So let's get these put together, get them back in the box, and then we can start talking about the rest of these. All I do here is take a pair of pliers, give yourself a little bit of a twist, maybe an inch or two worth of twist, and then I put one of these crimp rings on here. This thing is not coming apart unless you cut the wires. Now I have my ground clamped together, pushed to the back of the box, and then I have my two pigtails here that will go to one to each switch. Nice tucked up out of the way. The reason I put this in first is because this is a bare wire, so if this comes in contact with the hot screws on the switches, you're gonna get yourself a ground fault and kick breakers out. So I keep this nice and tucked back in there, and I got my wires looped so I don't have any sharp points sticking out. Nice, nice and tidy, and that takes care of the grounds. Right, now that that's out of the way, we're gonna go ahead and take our labels off. So the next thing I'm going to do, we have power coming in. So these are running off the same circuit, both of these lights. So we have one circuit here. So what I'm gonna do is take care of my neutrals next. So my hots, Let's just put those down this way and my hots for that down there. My neutrals coming up. So since these are all running on the same circuit, I'm gonna connect all my neutrals together. This is the return path. So the power comes in through your hot wires, goes up to the fixture, returns back on the same circuit on your neutrals. So since this is all on one circuit, all these neutrals can get tied together. Okay, we've twisted our neutrals together. I'm gonna to put my cap on. I like to avoid any sharp bends in the wires, so I coil things in a loop in the back. So now I'm left with my hot for my hallway my hots for my three-way switch and my power coming in and my power leaving. Let's first deal with the power coming in and the power leaving. So this needs to be passing through this box because we're bringing power in and then taking it to another switch because we have 
multiple fixtures on one circuit, multiple rooms, since everything is LED and they pull almost zero power. So we need to tie these together and then we're gonna pigtail two off of this, one to this switch and then one going to this for this switch. We're actually not gonna wire these up because they don't have the switches and we're just doing the rough in, but you'll, you'll get the idea here. Okay, let's take care of our power first. So we're gonna go ahead and strip a little bit off of these. Once the hots coming in and going out are stripped back, then we can tie everything together. Again, we'll use one of those crimp rings, put it on there, and then put a cap over top so all of the hot conductors are covered and not going to come in contact with any of the other conductors inside the box. Pretty slick way of doing it, but again, you're going to have to, if you ever want to take this stuff apart, you're going to have to cut the wiring because it, it you cannot pull it apart. That's the downside to it, but with the pigtails, shouldn't ever have to worry about that. We can change switches out without cutting the wires. So there is my neutrals, my ground in the back, my neutrals, and then my hots coiled up here that will get turned around here once we get the switches put in. So all I have left is my two hots for my three-way switch and my one hot for my two-way switch for the hallway. So if you think about it, I'm hooking one hot in with these two hots, giving electricity two different paths to take, both on the black and on the red hot wires over to the other switch. Now let's go over to the other switch and we'll get it wired up. And this circuit will be all ready and I'll explain how that box, the second switch, is going to be just a little bit different than this one. Now that we're done, I've put my power, dining, and hall labels back on so I know what conductors go to what. And I'm just gonna tuck that all back in there nice and neat. The inspector can poke around in there and look and then before the drywallers show up, we'll get this kind of pushed back to the back of the box so they can route out their drywall without nicking our wires. Here is our second box in our three-way switch series and this is a two gang box as well. So we have two different things going on in here, two different circuits. And the best way in my mind is to keep the two circuits separate from one another. Don't, inter, don't intermix. These wires here are for a four-way switch circuit that we have for the living room. That's a totally separate circuit. It's getting its power from somewhere else. So we're going to divide this box in half and treat it as two single gang boxes. These conductors go up the stud here into the ceiling over to the light fixture. So this is to the fixture. This is the three-way that we have from coming from the other switch that has the power. So the power is at the other switch. We're coming here to this switch and then going up to the fixture. There's different ways to wire a three-way circuit, so configuration is important. So we're going to be dealing with these two wires. So we're going to go ahead and take the labels off, and then we'll put the labels back on when we're done. Our second switch here on the circuit, let's talk about what's going on here and think about how power is moving through this circuit. So again, I'm separating these two circuits. You can connect all the grounds together if you want because this is just an emergency path. For me, I'm keeping them totally separate. So I'm gonna tie these two grounds together on this circuit and then we'll pigtail it to the switch when we get it put in. The neutrals we're going to tie together because this is the return path. Once the power goes to the fixture and then comes back through, we need it to get back to the source. So tying these two together will take the return path or create a return path going back to that first switch, which is where the power source is. Don't tie these neutrals in like we did with the first box. This is a totally separate circuit. So we wanna keep these neutrals separate from these. Tie those together. Now, power coming in, we have two roads that power can take. It's either gonna take the red hot wire or the black hot wire, depending on where the first switch is. It's gonna switch back and forth between these two. And depending on how these are hooked in in the switch position here, it's going to allow power either on the black or the red to go through to this black up to the fixture. 
So you can wire this where both switches have to be in the same position to have the light on or off, or you can make it where the switches have to be opposite to have the light on or off, depending on how fancy you want to get. Now let's go ahead, get the grounds wired up and put together, and then we'll get the neutrals pigtailed together or capped together, and that'll be our return path. Here's the finished product. We've coiled our neutral back up into the back in front of the ground, and we have the ground pigtail here to hook up to the switch. We have our dining room label. This is where the power is coming into the switch, and then we have the hot that goes up to the fixture, and I have it marked to the light. That's one circuit done, one three-way circuit. The next circuit is gonna be a four-way. This is actually the middle switch in a four-way circuit, which is why I have 14.3 coming in and going out. All right, and that's it for this three-way circuit. Now keep in mind there's different configurations for three-way switching. In my case, again, we have power coming to the first switch. We're running it through the second switch and then to the fixture. You could have a scenario where maybe the fixture is in between the switches where power comes into the first switch, runs to the fixture, and then runs over to this switch. Or you could have a scenario where power is run to the fixture first and then run down to the switches. So there's different ways of doing it. For me and in my mind, it is just simpler and I understand it better if I run power to the first switch and then run that power through the second switch before it goes to the fixture. And I'm gonna use that same mentality when we hook up this four-way circuit. I'm gonna run power to the first switch, run it to the second switch, run it to the third switch, and then run it up to the fixture. And that just helps me to understand the process a little better. Uh, again, just different ways of doing it, but I like to keep it simple in a way that I can understand it and a way in the future if I ever need to make a change Hopefully I remember how this is done and it simplifies the setup inside the box. Hey, and the other thing is if you haven't watched the video prior to this one for the rough end, I'm keeping that same theme through the whole process. Power goes to the switch first and then goes to the fixture. It's the way it is in every scenario in our build and that just helps me if I ever have to come back in later again to work on things, I know where that power is coming from. Guys, that's all I have for you today. We'll see you on the next video.